players feel it, really grateful for it. Um, it's uh, it's always a game changer when you see your people there supporting. So I want to thank them and looking forward to seeing them at Hard Rock on Saturday. Uh, but it was a, certainly a hard fought and a, and a massive road win for us, a conference play against a really talented team, good coaches, good scheme. And, you know, our guys found a way to just keep responding and play together as a team. And uh, they're driven and certainly found a way to get it done. And uh, preparations began immediately on Florida State upon our arrival in Miami. So that being said, questions, please. Does right. this have a different sort of feel than a typical and a normal, I should say, pass by any Florida State games in that you have so many guys in key roles for you who are not from Florida and have not been part of the series before? Does that, for them, it's just another big game. It is, do you have to educate guys on what this means? Or do you kind of like that approach that some of these guys just, Play the game that's in front of them and don't get wrapped up in the circus around it. Right. Now, you'd be surprised how many guys you would think wouldn't be familiar with it, but that are familiar with it. I think uh, it's important that we always educate our, our players on the history of the University of Miami and uh, such a insanely awesome rivalry like we've always had with Florida State. Uh, and at the same time, making sure that the main thing stays the main thing so that we don't spill over into emotional play and, you know, stuff that uh, that doesn't contribute to winning. So, but um, you know, the the response and the excitement is you know what you could imagine. Uh, I don't think, I don't think the rivalry uh, and the juice and energy behind it will ever change. You know, it's it's Florida State, Miami, and certainly uh, looking forward to a great challenge and a great opportunity. Does it change the dynamic at all in that this is a rarity in that when one team, there's been very few instances of a team being six wins ahead of the other when mm -hmm. when, when you guys go head to head. It's, we all know, it's, this has got to be their Super Bowl. This is the, their chance to do something with their season. What does that add to the Saturday? I don't, I don't think any, um, and I could say as a player, I don't, we never looked at the record of anyone who we were playing. It just, um, whatever the record of any team is in this rivalry, you're going to get the best version of them, and they're going to get the best version of you. And that's what makes the game so incredibly intense and physical and um and that's why so many guys come here to play in that game. Mario, uh, there's been a lot of the camera, TV cameras have found Michael Irvin on the sidelines a lot uh, the last couple of weeks. Um, I know X talked about uh, talking to, to Michael Irvin and Santana Moss, Reggie Wayne. How, how important is it to have the alumni around and have the alumni, you know, supporting the program you know, publicly, openly, you yes. know, very excited about things? Yeah, it's, it's, again, that's another reason so many guys came here for so many years was because of that, that type of mentorship. Is invaluable. Imagine getting mentored by Hall of Famers that have done it at the highest level uh, to the best of what most anyone can remember. So, uh, and it comes from the right place, comes from the heart, you know. And I think it also is an indication of how much the University of Miami means to the guys that went here, and that you know they're uh, they're feeling very positive about the direction of the program and that they want to be present and involved. Sure, well, these last three games, you know, two come from behind big threes, and then this past Saturday holding off a team like Louisville. What has that shown you about this year's team compared to the ones that you had in previous years? Their ability to not only come from behind and hold off a team like Louisville. Well, um, a lot of growth, right? I mean, you always look at those stages. People always talk about how in stage one of a program or year one, you know, typically if you have to redo things, it's it's a year where you take some really hard losses, and then and your second year you're more competitive and some of them are close and you win some and you lose a couple and then after that you start winning um, sometimes by a little bit and then eventually as you go on you become you know a uh, a more sustainable perennial you know type of program right and so these guys I think it's what we've always talked about they love to work there's a high level of trust and confidence due to I would say just um what's being earned out on the practice field on a daily basis uh, all the way since spring and their time and effort in the weight room since January and the fact that their approach to work now because we demand a lot of them seems to just it gets better um, and you could confront demand our team our coaches can from each other can get the most out of each other because we all have the same like mindset the same goals so it's a we all recognize we have a long way to go, and we're excited to get to work on getting there. Well, three days, it was three or three, four days ago, so I apologize for asking about something that's old news now, but it's been
big enough news. Um, on Friday, they announced that Joe Maria is no longer the interim, that he's obviously now the president going forward. Mm -hmm. What's that mean to you? What's that mean to program and just the university as a whole? Because we all know what Joe means to a lot of people around here. No sure. Well, I mean, it starts with him being an elite human being and a legitimate difference maker and impact guy. I mean, game changer for so many reasons. And uh, he's a guy that's poured his heart and soul into the University of Miami. Um, you know, I can honestly say I would not have hopped on a plane to come to Miami without the presence of our president, our current president, Joe Echeverria. Um, Grateful to him um, for all that he's done for not only uh, for athletics, but for the entire university. I mean, the, the trajectory of this university being an elite private institution, um, medical systems, everything, are, it's off the charts. There, there, is no, uh, there is no comparable out there. And uh, he's, uh, he leads that charge with us, so many of his colleagues. And uh, again, just a total difference maker and a game changer for Miami. Mario, uh, AJ Allen, you touched on a little bit post game uh, Saturday, but how he, how would you see him handling biding his time, having to wait for his opportunity, and just how he's been handling everything, and then to see it pay off on Saturday for him? Well, you know that's hard to handle, right? Because he's a really good player and he's a really good person, and he's a tough dude, and he works really hard. He's a competitor, you know. And we were fortunate. Um, where our offense or our offensive line was part of it, but that our running back room just got better and better. And we've we brought in some really good players and he's one of those really good players. So no one in there has done anything wrong to earn less reps. It's just that sometimes some guys push a little bit more ahead than others. But all week long and credit to Coach Merritt. Coach Merritt in the middle of the game said and he said it all week, this guy is, is he's running angry. He's just really getting downhill. Uh, he's being physical. He's seeing things very well. You know, he's got experienced eyes. We talk about guys like Jalen Rivers. He's got those old eyes. He's seen a lot. And what we were running really fit his style. And credit to Coach Merritt, he brought it up to myself and to Coach Dawson, Coach Mirabal. And it's like, yeah, man, let's go with it. And it provided a great change up, man. He went in there and he, he was a factor in the game. So certainly has earned himself uh, you know, more time. And I'm really happy for him because he really does deserve all the good things that come his way. Would that surprise you at all that the running backs, to, just to follow up on that angle, that mm -hmm. Mark, Damian, whoever gets called upon, they're ready to go when their number's called. And every, every three, the, the three, four guys, they could all be workhorse backs anywhere. And you've had to, to share, they've had to share the workload here. And it looks like they're reveling in mm -hmm. that. Does it surprise you how well kids have handled I think it is in this day and age, but then again, you know, sometimes it's not. And then it starts with a relationship in that room. And I think the level of respect that's demonstrated on a daily basis, because uh, you could tell, right? You could tell when, and we've all been there, right? You're competing for a spot. You look at it and you're like, oh, I'm a piece of that guy or whatnot. And you watch that room and the way they express their competitive character is by when they get their reps, they go, which has made it very difficult in distinguishing, okay, who really gets to go first or get, it's really hard. And they've made it that way. So um, they've taken a competition the right way. All right, they've taken it and not as a threat, as a way of getting better and making the team better. And they ran really hard the other day against a really good and talented defense. Um, you see the excitement it causes among the offensive linemen when they do so. So. Um, Tremendous. They're, a, they're an incredible example of how competition can make everybody better and their bodies feel good. They feel fresh. Their legs are strong. So, you know, hopefully we'll keep getting better and better in that department. The way we're and drag guys kind of probably a good 10 yards down the field and then mm -hmm. the entire O-line goes and gets in another five or six by continuing with the pile. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of highlights around here this year, but for you, what, what did how, how, oh, I, that I like that out? stuff the best, yeah. of course, you know. Um, but I, I pointed out that a couple of the receivers did stick their little narrow butts in there, you know, and got involved as well to help it out a little bit. Um, but it's it's good to see. It's um, you know, we needed um, we needed a performance like that out of our backfield. They responded well all week long with good practice. And when you watch film, you know, there's there's other opportunities that we had that could have really um, you know, opened up the game a little bit more uh, in that department. So 
again, we've got, a, we've got a lot of work to do, and we're playing against a really good defensive front and a defense that, you know, last Friday night, I mean, held uh, their opponent to three of 16, 17 on third down and um, is really big and massive and powerful up front. So we have got to be better this week in practice for it to show up on Saturday. Times, uh, on Saturday, you guys moved Jalen inside and put Marco Bell back in left tackle. I'm just, what do you like about that, that lineup on the line? Well, I think go, but going back to Coach Mirabal and what he does, he cross-trains everybody. And Markel Bell has earned playing time, and Markel Bell needs to continue to develop at a high level, and he did. I mean, he was blocking maybe some of their best players as effectively or more than anybody else on the field. And also, I think, um, you know, Jalen um, and Matt McCoy, we were going to move him around too. All those guys, Jalen, uh, Matt McCoy, about four others can play four to five positions. The other guys can play two, maybe three. Uh, and we want to do that more and more uh, because we've seen that in practice. The chemistry of that particular lineup has worked just as well as the other one. So um, we went with it and it worked out really well. Do you feel like that was the best run blocking performance up front of the season? Or? Um, I mean, it was, it was really good. We've had some other ones. Sometimes, you know, when you live in a little bit of the RPO world, um, you there's some opportunities that never come to fruition just because the ball gets spit out. Um, I think it was uh, certainly one of the better ones, you know. And uh, but again, lots of room for improvement, and those guys know it. So, right back to work. You mentioned FSU's D line. What else shows up on tape when you see FSU? Well, I think everything. I mean, you know, I've, obviously, I study um, the defensive side first. What you see is just a really talented team. Um, that is, again, they, they're about as talented um, in most of the key positions in the front seven, as you'll see. And the secondary is big, long, they're fast. Uh, they play man coverage as good as anyone that we've seen. Um, they mix it up pretty well as well. They got a, a wide variety of um, pressure and stunt packages that go with it. Um, and then I think their offensive line, I know they might have had a guy hurt or two, but they're another group that's really big, you know, a highly recruited class that is really strong and powerful and, you know, has had some really, really strong moments, um, you know, and again, all I see is I see a really good football team and um, looking forward to a great game. We always talk about quarterbacks and receivers finding symmetry, and, you know, clicking with one another. Mm -hmm. With Ruben back, mm -hmm. he and Simeon kind of, are, are they getting a rhythm together as well? Because it seemed like they were doing kind of whatever they wanted at times. They were, they played at a high level. They really did. I think they fed off each other, almost competed. I think Mesidor could be thrown in that mix as well. Uh, you know, Akeem has really just volunteered his body to do whatever we asked him to do inside, outside, nose tackle three, five, seven, nine. Um, and, you know, we're going to continue pushing that, that group. I know Coach Taylor has done a really good job with those guys developing them. And um, we can get more out of them. We can. There's more to be had there, and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna push and test them this week because, uh, you know, they're they're capable, and I think Saturday was a, an example of some of the things we can do. The, the explosiveness of the offense is obvious, um, but I want to ask you about the way you guys are controlling games on offense with time of possession. Um, are you, in some ways, as excited about that element as you are the explosive plays you guys are generating and, and limiting negative plays to that side of things on offense? I don't know if excited and time of possession are synonymous, you know? Right. Um, I think um, I think we're well-balanced. We're starting to, you know, become a well-balanced offense, but we're also not afraid to be aggressive and take whatever the defense provides opportunities for. I think the fact that we can change gears is, it benefits us tremendously. You know, we sometimes have gone tempo. Um, sometimes have huddled, sometimes have speed huddled, sometimes have increased the, the tempo of how we get in and out of the huddle. So um, I think if you can control the game, um, it's always a plus for your team. It wasn't something that we set out to do, you know, and not in most of the situations we've been in this year until late in a couple of the games that we've had, but uh, it's certainly, a, you know, a very positive sign. After watching, I get a chance to like watch the film of Saturday's game. What, what are some of the things uh, that you and the staff have identified on on defense? Obviously, we lost as an explosive offense in their own right, but right. what are some of the things on defense that you guys identified as, as things you need to work on or correct? Yeah, you know, well, we uh, some guys tackled really well. 
and some others didn't. Um, leveraging the football has got to be at a premium. And really communication. You know, we had some breakdowns in alignment and assignments that we have been, that we were good at early in the year. And everything we saw on film, number one, there's certainly an urgency to get fixed. And I'm talking about by players and coaches. There's a, what you don't see is just a lack of effort. You don't see that. That would be concerning. Uh, what you see is guys trying to bust their butts. And, and I think the first thing you got to do as a coach is you own it and find a way to teach it better so guys can really just cut it loose and not think and play. That's number one. And then number two, when you get to that level, you also have to put some of the onus on the players. Hey, you know, it's, it's teach and learn. Those are two-part system, right? And, and we've got to, through practice, through every ounce of preparation, walkthrough meetings, you name it, um, provide the, the guidance, the teaching, the mentorship, the confidence to be able to go out there and really and cut it loose and, and play fast, like we have shown in so many instances. And the ones where we haven't, certainly we didn't look good, but um, we feel like we do address them, we attack them dead on with transparency and honesty, and we know where we got to get better, and, and we're all over it. You obviously have the unique perspective of being a guy who played this rivalry and a guy who coached this rivalry, and you've seen more of these names than most people. Mm -hmm. Are there moments that you automatically go back to as the moments that define this series, or can you even allow yourself to go there this week when you're locked in? Man, you know, I, I can't publicly in my mind. I mean, scary thing, this mind, you know what I mean? But, yeah, you... It was the best days always as a player. Um, when the schedule came out as a player, you always made sure that day was circled because um, it was so different. Right? Ten, how many games we used to have? Ten or eleven? I forget. In the Stone Age, what, I forget how many games we used to have. But uh, the caliber of player that you were going to be playing against, um, the familiarities of some of the guys on the other team, you knew what uh, you knew what that game was going to be about. Right? Everybody was going to be strapping on ice bags and. You know, eating Advil, you know, to make sure to, to get over the, the physicality of the game. And, uh, but so many unbelievable memories. And honestly, I, this is the most I've thought. These last 30 seconds have been the most I've thought about. And the most I will just because the job at hand. I mean, we've, we've got a really, really good and talented football team coming in here. And, um, and we got to play our best football. And we've got a lot of work to do to, to get there. Speaking of uh, dealing with physicality and, and injuries and stuff, um, saw Damari kind of walking around a bit on the field um, mm -hmm. on Saturday. Is there a timetable for when you might get a chance to come back? Is it, you know, sometime during the regular season or is it still on note? Mm -hmm. It'll be sometime during the regular season towards the back end. I think the last couple of games is realistic. Uh, he's been, I mean, that guy's a really good player now. That guy, he's... A bit. It's a six foot one plus corner, and 200 pounds that runs like the wind and is physical. And he's chopping at the bit to get back out there. He, it's awesome to see the way he attacks his rehab and the way he stays engaged and continues to just learn and get better and help some of the other guys. And then to see him, you know, being able to walk around and he's already working on the, on the um, what's that machine called? That machine. <laughs> and he's uh, so he's really moving and making a lot of progress towards coming back, man, and um, I'm sure his teammates uh, can't wait for him to be healthy again. You have an update on Malik Bryant? He's good to go. So Malik uh, Malik got sick last week. I mean, came down with, um, you know, t just an awful virus. Um, and uh, we just couldn't get him, couldn't, couldn't get him back in time. And we didn't want to put him on the plane and spread that thing. And, you know, so, but he's good to go. Body weight checks out. He's strong. He's ready. And, He's also one we, uh, you know, we missed last week. Now he's he's played really good football for us. So looking forward to getting him back. You've obviously seen some really good quarterbacks, some really good offensive scheme in the last three games. But the numbers also probably pretty shocking as far as what you want to see out of your defense. What's the level of concern right now, or or is it is is there not much of one? Well, because yeah, it's not. Uh, I don't think it's a matter. I don't feel concern. Um, I feel urgency. You know, I mean, it's. Almost, you know, for a fact uh, that we're better than some of the things we have shown um, and that we need to be consistent in showing we got to get there. And, and you get there together, you know, during the year. I mean, the one thing that really stands like strong in our program is, you know, it's there's there's no division from within. You can't have it. You know, you just this football stuff. I mean, you, you see week after week, man, it is. 
it is absolutely insane the way that some of these games go. And so you've got to take uh, the fact that, you know, we may win some games 52 to 45, and we might have to win one three to two. You know, we don't know how it's going to come and when it's going to come. So until then, together, move forward and press on and just find a way. Find a way to get better. Uh, just, I guess it's that simple. Just get better. Just get better, you know. Is it kind of crazy to you that? What's that? Is it kind of crazy that 319 yards and four touchdowns from your quarterback is an average day? Yeah, well, I guess we'll have to live with average. <laughs> you know. Good. Guys, thank you thank very you. much. Thank I appreciate you. it.